I just, I don't know what's going on. So you'll have to bear with me. If, if you can't see it, I'll do a live and then I will post it for you. Thanks, Gabe. I'm not, I'm not being able to read everything. Um, can you see if I'm live? Okay, Pam, at least you're here. Dang, I lost all those cool people. Oh, Phyllis, you are a true heart. You've always got my back. Yvette, thank you, thank you. Um, we don't know if it's the snow. We've got a lot, a lot of snow today. Um, and uh, hi, Leslie. And so it's just a matter of whether I'm going to be able to to come by Sydney, to come in and out, back and forth. And I'm I'm losing my time. I'm so sorry. So you're looking at a mixture. Do you see how it's hardening? Do you see what's happening to it? It's actually getting so it's so hard that I can. Put it on. And sculpture it deeper and deeper. The harder this is, and you can see that that our time, our time frame is running out because it's hardening. And it doesn't, it's a chemical reaction, not a water uh, moisture reaction. You can uh, open up your time a little bit with, uh, with some moisture, but it dries really, really fast. Hi, Diane. Hi, Bernadette. So I'm working on several projects that I'm doing right now. This project, um, the Angel Wings, um, have four layers of putty on them and the thicker um, well you know I don't know I Facebook isn't liking anybody anymore so we're trying some new platforms so uh, we can finally um, get away with it but this is one this is the uh, the left wing of a set they are three feet tall. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Keith. <laughs> um, but this has got four layers of putty on it so far. And I'm going to just keep working on it, keep working on it. But the, the more putty you get on something, they need to be in a cool place so that they don't dry real, real fast. The deeper, the thicker your putty is, the faster it dries, the more apt it will be to crack. This piece right here, I started last night and I've got some of these pieces. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Cindy. I've got some of these pieces in here that are almost quarter inch thick. And, um, I'm using Wise Owl paints and DIY paints and just basic um, Sherwin Williams latex paints. So, if I could see this, I thought there was something you could add together to for work time. Um, well, it, it might be with solutions that you're working with out there that are on the market. Um, I know Liquitex has a, a modeling solution that that works, but it, it doesn't seem to work like I want it to. Um, you get used to a certain product, and it, it, it just, um, the wings are wall art, Cindy. Um, I'm going to uh, do many, many more. Um, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, dear, that you lost the feed. Um, I will do a complete video and put it out there so that, that 
Uh, and if you have questions, you can certainly go ahead and, and ask any questions. Hello, Marlis, beautiful woman. I haven't seen your 10 year before picture and today's picture. I've been waiting to see that beautiful picture. Um, the, well, on the Durham's can itself, I hope you can read that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never read it. Well, I shouldn't say that. That's a terrible thing. I have read it. It was probably 40 years ago. All I know is I can just use, I just use water. And um, we're, you know, experimenting with this kind of stuff. I've done um, knife painting for years and years and years. Um, but I've tried so many different things and I just keep coming back to the same same products. There's another product out there that you can use that I just found out. It's baby powder and white glue. I used it. I, I couldn't, I didn't want to fuss with it, so I didn't even try it out. I tried it out for a couple hours and then I went, ah, and threw it up against the wall. So it's sticking up there going like this. So, um, hi Karen. Um, you're welcome, Kathleen. Uh, I'm so you can see why you don't mix very much. When I'm doing a painting, I'm going to get up and get a couple paintings down. This painting right here uh, is done with, with this knife palette. Um, you can see it on my on my page somewhere. This one that I just started, I used um, artistic, Jennifer Ferguson's artistic painting studios um, damask roller through it. I palette knifed the putty on it and then I just rolled through it with her, with her roller and I'm going to put a, a vase with flowers on this. So let's just pretend that I know what I'm doing and um, put something on this one that you can see. I'm going to add a little bit of white to my color. I hope that just didn't go all over me. And it's thickening up again, so um, I never make more than a half. A, if I'm doing a whole background like this, I'll use a, I'll use probably a half a cup of Durham's, but I use it very fast. So um, if you're going to do it, you need to make sure that you you have drawn on there what you want to do, and that you're working very very quickly. Um, the dry time, I think it's so warm out here in the studio tonight that my dry time is shortening to about 10 minutes. But you can see what this cool stuff could do. You could make petals that are turning, that are coming back on themselves. They make their own shadows. And you have to learn how to work your palette knife. Uh, if you're left-handed, it might work differently. Um, the, oh, on my um, Cindy on the angel wings. Did I work with a formed base? I did. I drew them out. I have a picture that I wanted to that I drew of angel wings, and I scaled it. And someday, someday, if anybody wants, I'll give you a class on how to take a scale drawing like this and scale it up into a three. This is almost a three foot piece. And um, I used, I put it on plywood. I drew lines out to the scale and I drew it freehand on plywood. 
and then um, we cut it out of um, really nice plywood. Sculptured the edges so that they were nice and clean. Now I want to show you something. Do you see how that is that that's not forming like I want it to anymore? See how it's sliding and it's not adhering to the back? That's when you know uh, that's when you know your 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 paste is gone. And this is what it looks like when it's totally dry, just as dry as a, as a stone. Hi, Sherry. Um, it, you, it's sandable. I can, I can drill in it. I can dremel. Um, I can do just about anything with it. So um, with that in mind, let's see if I can pick up these two leaves. You have to make sure that your background has a tooth and that it, it makes it so that it will, um, it will adhere to your, your product, your putty. And you can, uh, if you've ever been a cake decorator, uh, you'll be really good at this. I've actually used cake decorating tools in painting before, doing wall art. Do you want to make sure that that is down into your your background because if it if it doesn't if it doesn't grab, it won't it won't stick. So, I have a question for you. Uh, you start ROV if you paste gets too thick and slides. Yes, yes. Um, I just have a batch of paper plates. And if I'm using color, I do a lot less. I'll, I'll do a much less proportionate amount than I would if I were do doing an entire background at one time. Um, I want to make sure that 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 the colors and the glue um, stick well. And for some reason, the Elmer's white glue works better. Um, hi, Jeanette. Hi, what? Um, works better than than any other glue. Um, Durham's Rock Hard Putty has a yellow cast to it. So it you, I have a hard time making it so it um, is pure white. So when I'm doing a piece like I did the Empress last month for uh, for Jane, um, I did it with with no color and then I painted them and shadowed them shadowed them afterwards. So just be patient, stir it. And some people stir it in a, in a paper bowl or a plastic bowl, and they can probably get it stirred faster and make less mess than I am tonight. But I like to have it on a palette so I can get my colors and my everything put together in. Now, there is a, a, a group out there, and they come from Russia, that do... Uh, primarily a, a very very large um, and you add water until you get it to the the consistency that you want uh, that they are doing beautiful beautiful artworks um, with sculptured sculptured flowers and you can get their colors all pre-mixed it's spendy and I I'm getting some, so I'll I'll test it and see what see what you know what I have to say about it. I'll tell you how it goes or not. Now I'm going to take a little spoon, and on the back of the spoon, I'm just going to add some of 
my putty. And I'm going to make some little ruffled flowers. And I think the heat is just getting me tonight. Because my putty is just globbing up really fast. It's not as creamy as usual. But on the, the Empress piece I did for last year's, last month's competition, I used a spoon on all those flowers. Now, I'm not liking the consistency tonight as well as I did this morning when I was working. And it's, it's interesting to me that it changes, um, it, it changes, you know, with, with the, the altitude that you're at and we're, you know, we're up in the Rocky Mountains with, and the longitude you're at. And I'm going to get um, another glue and try another glue. I really like Elmer's, um, and I can't find my Elmer's, my perfect Elmer's glue tonight. What I plan on doing, because I messed up on our time and uh, didn't, didn't get the time like I really wanted to have with you tonight, um, I am going to make a complete video and I'll post it and you can come and to my SK on Elderberry site and uh, watch it as many times as you want to and I will give you the brands that I'm using see this it's globby it's like snot <laughs> this isn't this isn't what you want you want that perfect that perfect pudding. So let's try again. Let's try once more. And let's just use water this time and I'll show you the difference. And again, I would uh, use a sifter because some of these have been sitting on the shelves. Uh, powder form putties, any of them have been sitting on the shelves for a long time. And they have a consist, you know, a tendency to, um, to uh, glob up like flour does or sugar does after time. You'll see the difference in that? And I've got too much water in it, too much liquid. This is perfect um, on wood furnitures. Um, I use it as rest when I'm restoring furniture. Um, I'm gonna lay it down for a second. Uh, filling cracks and repairing veneer. Um, uh, flour, uh, flour sifter is what I use. In fact, I use, um, I use my mother's <laughs> flour sifter that I inherited. Okay, now, see the difference? See the difference how that, how that looks and feels compared to this? And uh, I'll show you what that other one looks like already. Look at it. It's like, it's nasty. And it's because the glue I put in it wasn't uh, Elmer's. 
So use Elmer's if you're going to put glue in it. If you're not going to put glue in it, um, then I wouldn't worry about it. You can do this without glue, but I have found that I do really, really well um, when, when you have a tendency to have your layers of plaster uh, very thick. Um, I've been trying to go back and learn from the old masters how they how they hand sculptured plaster and what it was made of and it's um, they still do it in parts of Italy so but where I live this is this is the best I can do so it is just a matter of uh, how you're going to create the look that you're trying to create But again, the thicker I make this, if I were to make this a half inch thick, if I were to leave that like that, overnight in a, a warm place, that would crack. That would have a, a crack in it. You can sand it and then you can paint over it, but it still would have that, that crack in it. Um, some of them look like porcelain cracks, a really fine line uh, porcelain crack. Now, the flowers that you work on are going to determine which way your putty knife will should turn. If I'm doing my geraniums, I know that I'm going to have petals on top of petals on top of petals. So I might change my color. And remember, as this dries, it, it dries kind of uh, chalky. So when I go back in and wax it or poly it, it will, um, it will turn it back into a really beautiful, um, brilliant color. Now your, your testing and your experimenting will be totally different than mine and you will find uh, things that I have never found. Um, you'll be able to do things that, that uh, is just beyond my capability. So um, I'm going to start putting tutorials, uh, tutorials, tutorials, SK, of everything I know. I'm going to start making tutorials and putting them on my Facebook page. And you can go in there and watch them anytime you want. So if you have a, um, a composition, if you would like a class on composition, color and line theory, um, I think every single artist that I know should have a composition class. Uh, because if you don't know composition, uh, things just don't work out r real well. I painted for 25 years and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get my compositions to look right and my paintings to look right. And an artist friend took me under her wing and she taught me the Greek mean, which is uh, line composition. And when, once... I learned that, I got home that night, and I just exploded. Um, the, the, it made all the difference to me in the whole wide world on how, where something goes, and why something should do, and why the sunlight should go a certain way. So if you have um, certain things that you would like to, for me to teach, that you think that I'm qualified to teach, um, I'm going to be making um, available uh, to anyone who wants to watch them. I'm going to use all kinds of different um, mediums. I will use uh, my composition class is teaching uh, the Greek mean 
and uh, like I said, I think that's it's an imperative that that you learn, that every one of us learn and and get better at our compositions. You can be the best painter in the world, and if your composition is off, it just skitters into the wind. So, um, oh no. <laughs> Thank you, Marlis. Thanks. Thank you for everything. I'm, I'm, I appreciate y'all. It's been a tough, it was a tough summer and kind of a tough fall and winter. And so I'm glad to be back getting, getting some things done in the studio. Um, the more I learn, the happier I am. And you guys teach me so much that I just scroll and, and I want to try things. So don't just scroll by, learn and try things. And um, I will continue working on this and I will show you uh, the results. And I want to tell um, uh, Andrea, thank you so much. What a sweet heart that you were to choose me as your test, <laughs> your test Thursday night subject. Um, very cool. We had a, an outstanding um, membership come on, and uh, it's going to be a great, great year if I don't fall in the basement again. <laughs> and Marjorie is in bed. God bless you, Marjorie. I hope that you get well. Just had a, a replacement. Um, oh, thank you so much. Uh, it's my birthday's coming up next month, and I'm gonna be 67. Ah, that that just can't that just can't no no no, just can't happen, just can't happen. I don't know where the time goes. So um, I'm feeling urgent. I have this urgent feeling that I need to be getting this stuff out, so that. Um, it's not like it needs to be written in it. I, I'm not reinventing the wheel by any means, but I just feel like I need to empty my brain <laughs> and give it to everybody else so that they can go out and reinvent the wheel. So yeah, I'm a young girl. <laughs> Casts off, so uh, no more falling into the cellar. And I uh, love you all. Thank you so much. And uh, Andrea, thank you. And Gabriel, thank you for your help. I wish I knew what I were doing. <laughs> it is just a number. I'm about 30, I think. My daughters get embarrassed when they're with me. <laughs> oh, God. Phyllis, we're twins. I knew that. Love y'all. Have a great night. Bye.